A cube, by definition, is a box-shaped object, bounded by six square surfaces of equal size. When we think of a cube, symmetry, balance, equality are the words that come to mind. And when it came to design a logo for the Baptist Union of Wales, those attributes seem to reflect our purpose and our calling. For it strives to give expression to the idea of belonging, bringing together the constituent churches of the Union and the associations as one family. It also endeavours to secure parity between the two wings of the Union in language, expression and respect. That parity is further expressed by the symbol of the cross on the map of Wales. The two sides of the cross, representing the two wings of the Union, and of the need to work together in unity and purpose. The cube itself, when opened up, forms the shape of a cross, and the cross of Jesus Christ is at the centre of our faith and testimony. The cross is the place where wounds are healed, freedom found, and new beginnings start. And the cross has sustained the witness of the Union from its inception 150 years ago and throughout the ensuing years has provided a vision, an insight, and a direction to its ministry and mission. John Bowring's hymn reminds us that the cross is the ultimate expression of hope in Jesus Christ. In the cross of Christ thy glory, towering over the wrecks of time, all the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. This year, we gather to celebrate the sacred story in the life and witness of the Baptist Union of Wales. That story began 150 years ago, in 1866, at Llanwenarth, one of the earliest Baptist churches in Wales, when five of the nine Welsh-language Baptist associations in Wales gathered together to form the Baptist Union of Wales and Monmouthshire, as it was then known. It was in 1959 that the title was changed to the Baptist Union of Wales. In 1790, all the Baptist churches in Wales belonged to one association. But by 1860, that association had been split into nine smaller associations. Between 1830 and 1862, there was a significant increase in the number of churches, from 215 to 561, and an increase in the number of ministers from 190 to 367. There had been discussions prior to the meeting at Llanwenarth. Meetings had been held at Swansea, Llanelli and Pontypridd, but the meeting at Llanwenarth on the 21st of August 1866 was the milestone that marked its formation. One commentator at the time noted that the union was the result of much patience and deliberation, the culmination of prayer and tears. There were some who feared that the coming of the new union would create a kind of authority that would control the life of the churches and associations and challenge their sovereignty. By 1878, when the annual meeting was held at Aberystwyth, the remaining dissident associations had also joined amid an air of apprehension and caution. The initial years that marked the birth pangs of the Union reflected that sense of caution, as meetings were only held every two years, and the administration of the Union was left in the main to the Reverend Daniel Davis, the blind minister from Aberavon, who was appointed moderator, and Llewellyn Jenkins as assistant secretary. In 1861, which coincided with the establishment of the Baptist College at Llangollen, the Baptist Building Fund was formed, with a target figure of £2,000. However, by 1867, the fund had realised £12,000, and by the close of the century, interest-free loans of £44,376 had been granted to churches in order to build their chapels, and the building fund became the nucleus of the Union. 
Between 1871 and 1895, a number of the affiliated organisations and trusts, which included the Temperance Society, the Literature Society, the Assurance Trust and the Sunday School Union, although remaining independent, had clustered around the Union and presented their annual reports to its council at the assembly gatherings. The closing years of the 19th century saw a period of substantial growth in the number of churches in membership with the Union, as well as an increase in the number of its ministers. The advent of the railway had made travelling easier and provided the means for churches to send their representatives to the Union's annual meetings. Following the revival of 1904 or 5, the constituent churches of the Baptist Union of Wales consisted of 142,500 members. In 1895, at the annual assembly held at Trill, the Home Mission Fund was formed under the chairmanship of Alfred Thomas MP, who later attained the title Lord Pontypridd. Up to the close of the 19th century, the Union had been served by part-time officers, both lay and ministerial, but as the work grew and the duties became more exacting, there was a call for a more established order. And in 1902, it was decided to appoint the Union's first full-time General Secretary in the person of the Reverend Edwin Edmonds. He had already served as part-time Secretary of the Union, and under this new arrangement, he was expected to see to the administration of the Union, as well as becoming an agent for the BMS in Wales. BMS funding half his stipend, and the other half in the form of an honorarium payment from the various societies affiliated to the Union, in return for acting as their secretary. But as the work increased, BMS desired a full-time agent in Wales, and the Reverend Thomas Lois, who had served as a missionary in the Cameroons and in the Congo, was subsequently appointed, thereby releasing Edwin Edmonds to concentrate fully on the work of the Union. Supporting ministry within the Union was seen as an essential element of the work, the Sustentation Fund was set up to support ministers and had realised the sum of 50,000 by the year 1920. 2,500 was contributed annually by the churches towards the maintenance of the weaker churches. And the Reverend Edmonds was well respected and admired by all and was warmly welcomed on his visit to the churches. He served for 32 years until his death in February 1934, during his presidential year, and was succeeded by the Reverend R. T. Evans. The new arrangement within the Union had necessitated other needs as well. A church house and offices were called for, and in due course, Ilston House in Mansell Street, Swansea, was extended and refurbished between 1938 and 1940, to provide a serviceable suite of rooms, book room, council chamber, offices, committee rooms, stores, and a dwelling for the new secretary and his family. Reverend R. T. Evans was also appointed General Secretary in September 1934, and both he and his family took up residence above the new central office of the Union at Ilston House. He served the Union for 23 years, from 1935 to 1958. The 20th century witnessed a period of changing attitudes in the aftermath of the First World War, the Great Depression of the 30s, and when war was again declared in 1939. Organised Christianity across the denominations in Wales went into a long decline. And Irene Bevan described the plethitude of non-conformist churches that dotted the Welsh valleys of his day as extinct volcanoes. During R.T. Evans's administration, 
the women's movement, under the guidance of Mrs. R. T. Evans and Mrs. Bessie Daniels, the widow of a former minister, and others, gained momentum, and the dream of establishing a residential care home was first discussed. That dream became a reality in 1970, when the home at Glenest opened its doors. Thirty years later, the home at Brinchivor in Bangor was opened on the 20th of May, 2000. Reverend M. J. Williams was appointed General Secretary in 1959, and he served for 18 years until his retirement in 1977. M. J. had ministered among the English wing of the Union, but soon gained the respect of both wings, and his solid leadership and wise counsel was much admired. In 1914, the existence of a growing language problem had led the Union to consider dividing itself into two wings, a Welsh wing and an English-speaking wing. The English Assembly held its first meeting in September 1921. Today, the 11 associations that make up the Baptist Union of Wales have a total membership of 14,800 in 444 churches, a far cry from the 142,500 members in 1905. The role of General Secretary was initially considered to be administrative and office-based, but during the ensuing years, the role provided an opportunity to be more proactive in its leadership and in its involvement with the churches, as well as providing a pastoral oversight of its serving ministers. Reverend D. S. Lewin Davis was appointed General Secretary in 1978 and served for 14 years until his retirement in 1992. And the Reverend Peter Dewey Richards, who had served initially alongside S. Lewin Davis as Assistant Secretary, was appointed General Secretary in 1993. In 2003, Peter returned to full-time pastoral ministry at Castle Street, London. A short interregnum followed, and the Reverend Peter Thomas was appointed in 2004 and began his tenure as General Secretary in January 2005. During his term of office, the Union was blessed in seeing a substantial increase in the number of new ministries being inducted to serve both wings of the Union as God's incredible plan was manifested. The current General Secretary is the Reverend Judith Morris, who took up office in January 2015. Each General Secretary has brought to the role their own particular talents and God-given vision, and supported by the dedicated staff at Ilston House in Swansea, and more recently at the Llwyfan in Carmarthen, the Union has developed its relationship with the churches, and has been a means to offer guidance and support, as well as introducing a number of new initiatives to its member churches. The appointment of a church life secretary in 2005 in the person of the Reverend Mark Cohen, and then the appointment of a mission director in 2012 in the person of the Reverend Simeon Baker, underlines the Union's commitment to prioritise its ministerial and missional involvement. The close working relationship of the Union with BMS has long been established having secured a Baptist coordinator for Wales and, more recently, a jointly funded mission coordinator in the person of Dr. Mena Machrith Cloyd. In 2007, the Baptist Union of Wales moved to its new office, which is located on the campus of the University of Wales Trinity St. David's at Carmarthen. The Llwyfan provides a modern office and administration centre for the Union's various standing committees, councils and assemblies. And during the ensuing years, the need to adapt to the ever-changing patterns within ministry and the constant need to support and encourage churches has become the main thrust of the Union's role. 
a review of the Union's constitution and the setting up of a trustee board to oversee the work is among the developments of recent years. But what of the morrow? To envisage a future of the Union calls for both insight and vision. We need to ask two fundamental questions. Where are we at and where are we going? And whether the former provides an impetus for the latter to be realised. We place our trust in God's incredible plan. Imagining what God could do, what a church could be, and who we could become. And so we give thanks for Baptists in Wales, for the Baptist Union of Wales, for John Miles who established those very early churches in the Swansea area, for those who stepped out in faith, for those who captured the vision of the Baptist Union of Wales, for the very first annual meetings held here in Tabernacle Chapel, Carmarthen, and for those who have brought us to this significant milestone today. But what of the future? In this post-Christian age, do we have a future as Baptists in Wales? I don't have a crystal ball, but there is one thing of which I can be absolutely certain. God will continue to guide and strengthen us as we continue to engage and grapple with our contemporary challenges. We know that the landscape of tomorrow is going to look very different to the way it looks today. There are churches throughout Wales who are discerning God's will for the future. Traditional churches, churches that have been renewed, pioneers who are seeking new expression of church life. We see tentative signs of new hope and we give thanks that God continues to call people to serve him today. And so we give thanks for our past. We celebrate our witness today and we look forward to the future in sure confidence and faith in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The memories of our yesterdays are the silver strands that connect the experiences of the past with the living of today. They are the mooring ropes that anchor in our history and provide the basis for inspiration and hope as we face the morrow. Looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who is the same yesterday, today and forever. So as we celebrate what is past and look forward to the future, we pray that we will know God's abiding love and grace and his spirit to motivate and guide us and to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus for ever and ever.